Great. Ms. Warren, your ideas for efficiencies? I am a firm believer that everybody deserves their day in court. And I'm also a firm believer that everyone has the right to have a judge hear their case and secure its process. And so with that in mind, um, I am not in favor of limiting in any fashion the oral argument of any of the litigants. But I can also tell you that I agree. It's very hard to sit on the outside and say, this is how I think the Superior Court should change. I think the wisest course of action is to get on the bench and then see what works well and see where there are areas of improvement. That's what I did as district attorney when I took over and when I recognized that there was a lack of victim resources, I instituted robust victim programs. When I created my own law firm, I knew what worked well in the law firm I had worked at and I knew areas that could be improved. And so therefore, I think it's important when you first take a position that you assess the situation and then you apply some experience and background in order to make efficiencies and improvements where you can. Ms. Trees? Yes, um, I, I agree. I, I um, think that everybody deserves a day in court. Uh, that's not something that I would hope to limit. Um, as, a, as an athlete, as a mother, as a manager of the law firm, you learn every day new things to make make your practice and your life more efficient. Um, I don't want to be a person looking from the outside in. Uh, I, I would come on as a team player and hear what the judges have to say and then be willing and excited to work with them to make the court more efficient um, and to try new and different things just like I do every day. I can remember when I first started uh, practicing law, we uh, opened law books. Now, there are no law books. <laughs> Everything is on a computer screen and it's instant. We file things, we file them online. Things are changing and uh, I think changing for the good. And I will continue in that direction. Judge Beck. Thank you. As I said previously, it's different to look at what a judge does than to actually do it. So I don't think it would be fair to all my colleagues that are in the room for me to um, second guess the procedures that they have at this point, but I certainly would be honored to work towards bettering any, any of the processes. But I will say, and I thank you for the example regarding mediation, that that's something that certainly interests me and that I would be interested in learning more about. I just had a case not too long ago um, of some two, some families that were fighting over property rights. And I can tell you as a court common police judge, I see frequently how mediation results in in better results essentially not driving people to court but rather settling the matters outside of court i don't think that it is ever too late for people to try to work together so i'd be interested in learning more about that that's the way that we get better results i mean those people intend to continue to live side by side and they're going to be better off if they can try to work it out than going through the courts most cases turn out you know people's uh, opinions get more hardened and people get more upset when they come to court so anything we can do to try to resolve it for them which is why when people come to court in front of me i first ask how can i help rather than sort of getting people ingrained in it i will also say that the other thing i would like to do is just see more education from the superior court about exactly what the superior court does and how it handles things i am on the pennsylvania supreme court commission on judicial independence which seeks to educate the public about the importance of the independence of the judiciary. It's a great uh, committee to be on because it's educational in nature rather than people fighting on it, which I appreciate. And I will also just say that I don't mean that to be self-serving because I want to educate the public about it. I mean it to give a shout out to all of the Superior Court judges that are here today who come to the trial court judges um, association meetings and make sure that all the court of common pleas judges are understanding exactly what they're doing. Terrific. All right, so the next question, we're going to shift gears a little bit. Um, and I want to ask about um, diversity and systemic bias, um, which is, I, I will tell you up front, that's a, these are very hard questions to answer in 90 seconds. But starting uh, with Ms. King, uh, why don't you tell us about your historic efforts to promote diversity, to fight bias in all of its forms, and then when you become a judge on the Superior Court, what steps you've considered taking to promote diversity and to fight bias in all of its forms? Well, I can certainly tell you that the child abuse cases that I handle on a daily basis, they affect every type of person from every kind of background. And, uh, but with respect to 
uh, how I can help increase uh, diversity on the Superior Court. Specifically, it's, you know, not one judge cannot actually, you know, do anything beyond really making sure that the folks that they hire are um, diverse as far as clerks, as far as uh, support staff, but I think it's important when you're considering cases that you remove any kind of bias at all from any case and that you are fair and you're impartial to every single person. And when I handle a case, I take a total picture of approach about every kind of case. And I want to make sure I understand the competing dynamics because, as I said previously, prosecutors have a lot of power. And with that power comes a tremendous responsibility. And before you make the decision to charge or you impose sentence if you're a judge, it's important to have the respect and understand the ramifications of those decisions. Ms. Warren. When I was a partner at a law firm in Philadelphia, I had the opportunity to create a litigation team that was going to be extremely busy. And diversity was my number one priority. So I intentionally looked for candidates who were highly qualified, who maybe had faced some challenges in their life because of who they are or where they were from. And I hired very high quality litigators. And I was very proud of that team. Everybody stepped up to the plate and did a fantastic job. And I think part of it is because diversity helps to create the best possible environment and everyone using their different skills, their different backgrounds, and their different knowledge really provides an absolutely wonderful um, proving ground, if you will. I also will take that type of experience and that focus to the Superior Court and give opportunities to individuals who, again, are qualified despite their backgrounds and despite potential differences. Uh, I think that's very important in order to advance that in the legal system and in the justice system. Ms. Teresa. Yes, uh, growing up in the 60s and 70s and then playing on a, a basketball team that was extremely diverse, uh, I have uh, been exposed to diversity and to, to living with it and, and to seeing what the struggles are. Uh, being a Title IX athlete and being one of the first women to get a full uh, athletic scholarship, I've watched the diversity. When I went into the courthouse, courtroom as a young female attorney, um, I was, I was uh, exposed to some bias, and I did, not, I did not like it. So I have made myself all the time be very aware of this. Hire people who are qualified regardless of their, their background um, in, in my firm, and work with clients who need my help and who need justice regardless of, of who they are. I have stripped myself as best I can of biases and, um, and that's how I live, that's how I raise my sons, and that's how I practice to this day. Judge Beck. First of all, I won't stand for anybody disrespecting anybody in my courtroom. If that ever happens, I shut it down immediately and uh, keep us back on track. The question about implicit bias is the first thing is that we as judges need to know that it exists. Um, I've heard, uh, we've been trained on that in many conferences that I've gone to. We're trained then to do something about it in terms of any kind of education that helps us to understand any segment of the population. Um, we, as you know, as many of you know, we have continuing judicial education credits as judges now, I think maybe about two years ago or so. I have been taking uh, continuing judicial education credits since I was elected as a judge because I believe it betters me as a judge. I'm always looking to better myself. There's actually, incidentally, when I went to one training, I guess there is a Harvard questionnaire for those of you in the crowd that care to take it. It's actually interesting, which would reveal your own implicit biases. A lot of people think that they don't have any, but you take the questionnaires and it opens up your eye to it. So just knowing that it exists, making sure that it never happens in the courtrooms and that we're taking steps to be proactive about it. And Judge McCaffrey. And yeah, I, I guess I have to confess that I'm pretty much at an unfair advantage with this question because I'm from Philadelphia. Um, Philadelphia Court of Common Pleas has been at the forefront of, of recognizing implicit bias and kind of 
um, instructing individual of the courts and re taking remedial measures to make sure that this bias is kind of recognized and addressed in the the court system. Uh, in here in Philadelphia, where I grew up, in the neighborhoods that I grew up in and live in, um, I had <coughs> the advantage of actually working with probably the most talented bench in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and a full 50% of our uh, judges are African American, including our former president, Judge, Judge Frederick Messiah Jackson, is here. Currently, the administrative judge in our court system is Judge Jack on Allen, African American female. <coughs> My supervising judge is Judge Leon Tucker. We have daily, um, not daily, but weekly, monthly training, as, as Christy just alluded to, with a, an implicit bias recognition, uh, remedial measures within the court system. We make sure that we promote diversity actively. Um, and that just doesn't include racial diversity. We, we, we promote LGBT diversity. We, we uh, promote um, diversity of all kinds and all measures in our court system, not just with our hiring staff, but with um, you know, anybody that who's our contractors and anybody who's our vendors. So it's something that kind of we deal with on a, on a regular basis. And being at the Philadelphia court system is probably the most progressive court system in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. It's, um, our judges are the ones who are kind of leading the charge with recognizing implicit bias throughout the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And, um, addressing and implementing remedial measures to make sure that it's recognized and taken care of. Terrific. So now I'm, I've been relishing this question because I came up with it and I'm very pleased with myself. It's a feel-good question. Um, and I, I, I always talk about my judicial hero, and that's Thurgood Marshall. I, I love Thurgood Marshall and everything he stood for um, and his courage. So I want to know from the five of you, who is your legal hero, who is your personal hero, and why? So, Ms. Warren, why don't you start us off? So my legal hero would be Justice Scalia. I have to move the microphone. Uh, Justice Scalia, and I admire him because he believed in judicial restraint, and he also believed in following the Constitution and the rule of law. My personal hero is my father. Uh, as I said, I grew up in a blue-collar family, and my father taught me and my siblings to be honest, work hard and get an education. And that's been a recipe for success for me and my family our entire lives. Um, my father was very community minded. He taught us to give back to the community. And ever since I've been little, I was either helping him or individually volunteering at charities. I spend a lot of time and I've also encouraged my children to get involved with charities. So. My dad, again, is truly my hero, and he was my number one cheerleader. Terrific. Ms. Teresa, your legal and personal heroes and why? Uh, my my uh, legal would be Justice Ginsburg, because uh, she uh, showed us as women, she's brilliant, she showed us as women that we can all do this. And my um, personal hero would also be my father, uh, Louis M. Teresi, Jr., who, um, uh, his father was a coal miner, and he ended up, he was the first to graduate college and law school, and he has become a, became a very um, wonderful trial attorney in Pennsylvania, and a wonderful father, and a wonderful husband, and um, has been a tremendous teacher and mentor to me, and he continues to be a teacher and mentor to me, and I can't say enough about him and how much I feel for him and the, the guidance he's given me in um, the courtroom and in life, in the law, as a daughter. So I could just go on. Wonderful. Judge Peck, your heroes. Thank you. I would also say Justice Scalia, but not for the reason that probably everybody here is sitting here thinking. It is because I love that he reached across and was really good friends with Justice Stan Ginsburg. I like the idea that intellectually you can have completely different intellectual thoughts, but you can have a discourse about it and you can be friends. And that's what I'm interested in in society, quite frankly, balance. Quite frankly, and with all due respect, I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat, um, whatever your leanings are, what we I'd like to do is have us all have a more friendlier discourse about everything that's happening and to have a more unified society so that we can come together. On a personal note, I will tell you several of the judges that I now serve with um, in Dauphin County. Um, I can't say enough about her. I remember a young DA got in front of Judge Lazarus on the bench and um, watched her you know, become one of the best trial judges in the city of Philadelphia, uh, become one of the best appellate court judges. But uh, you know, there's so many great judges I can kind of pick from, including my brother. 
if I have to name one person, it's probably somebody that many people in this room don't even know about. It's a special different, judge different, different issues that concern me. I'm finding I'm so, many, so many different mentalities, different mentalities today. It seems hard. hard. It seems challenging. It seems challenging. I don't say hard because the only thing hard is the concrete that we walk on. Everything, everything else is a challenge. Else is a challenge. Um, so, 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 I'm ready for I'm this ready challenge. For this challenge. And, I was, and I was 